Yeah. Now you don't go take from nobody that's out here grinding and working and giving your own dick. Nigga, that's a hater. Yeah. You a hater, cuz. Dolph died. I made a post about it. I mm-hmm. don't know if you saw it. When Dolph died, I woke up to it. And, and it, it, it really pissed me off, man. Mm. I woke up to Man, yeah, I'm like Kia Shine. He said he just finna do positive music and that. And this rapper said, man, the music got to change the direction of the music. I've been doing this shit for 12 years. Welcome y'all to another episode of the Presidential Executive Podcast. What's going on? What's, what it do, Rack? Man, you got it. I'm in here. Enjoying in, myself. In here. Um, you see, this is a different setup here. Um, actually, I had to take a shower because I was trying to see setup. I, I put the couch right there. See, it was over here. It was too big for the, you know what I'm saying? So I had to get that from the other room and stuff like that. So it's a little different. may look different the next time we have another guest. You know what I mean? So... This is all new here, but we do have an official, official, you know, first guest. Actually, my homie Cornelius was kind of the first, but this is a first first because we got an official microphone and you got an official seat. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You you not, you know, just part of the, a little part of the picture. You kind of got yeah. your own little space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So My own sick, my VIP sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Introduce him, Rag. Come on. Man, this is so, so we got Memphis royalty in the building. You know what I'm saying? This gets special to us because we go back like the Jerry Curl. Like, we go back like the Soul Glow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but this is our homie, our brother, you know, an entrepreneur, uh, an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, like going all the way back. Like, if you know him from, from balling, he a, he a hooper. You know what I'm saying? It was a time. I don't know if he still get out there and do it, but I know it was a time he would give you <laughs> buckets. Play with it. I don't know how much you get out there now, but I know you you can try him if you want to. He got a couple buckets left him. Hey, hey, it was a time, man. He he'll take you off the dribble and mess you up. Uh, but man, also man, an artist. Um, but at one time he was known as Young D. Uh, featured on a lot of uh three six songs. Also had his own was was really big in the underground even before he got with three six. Like he was man pushing his CDs back in the day, man doing his thing, and then you know ended up. Uh, on their label, uh, doing a lot of songs with them. Um, now, grown man, young Veli, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, so you, you see him, Veli or young Veli, you know, uh, also, like I said, entrepreneur, uh, has his own line of, of uh, sauces for your wings. You can't get them anywhere else. Ah. Yeah, Veli <laughs> sauce, you can only get from young Veli, from Veli himself. So he got the Veli sauce for the wings. Uh, I remember when he was posted up on a uh, it was Covington Pike and stage at a restaurant over there, and I, I had come through, and like the wings ain't no joke. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. my my only excuse is a lot of times I'd be working. By the time I get off, you know he shut down. But like when I tell you it was worth every dollar that I paid for it. Yeah. Like it ain't no joke. And so, uh, man, still. Let's doing give it up for Young Billy. Young Billy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. What it do? What, what it do, my guy? What it do, man? How? Um, I'm just just get right into it. Like, um, Veli is what you what you like what is like to be called now, right? Yeah. Veli, okay. But before it was uh, Young D. This was probably I guess it was probably like 10, 15 years ago. Well, yeah. probably longer than that. 10, years ago. Ten, twelve years ago, something like that. Okay. So what? Because we gonna get into what you do now, right? You know, but what is you know how did you get into the music scene back in the day? I just, honestly, the only thing I can say is it was just a gift. Like, I always rhymed words. When I was five or six years old, I was rhyming. And when I really didn't even know what rapping was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just was rhyming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always had a, a passion and a love for music, not just hip hop, just music. Mm-hmm. R&B, country, if it felt good, it sound good. I cling to it. Uh, I found out later on uh, when I was about maybe 15 or 16 that my dad was a songwriter. He never told me. Mm-hmm. I was young and, you know, when I started taking music serious, he was like, man, why well, used to write songs? And I wrote a song for a lady when I think they jibbed me. 
and uh, mm. send me the records, and he went in the closet and got the records, and you know I Google, you know went in online and Google, you know the song was copyrighted in his name. Like wow, you know, right? Dad was I knew he was a DJ. That was okay. his thing, you know what I'm saying? Around Memphis. Yeah. Around, okay. He, he he went to school for it. He got a degree in it. Mm. He never pursued it, but he was uh like. I never heard nobody like him. Like I even right now to this day, I try to push him to, to you know, get back to it, and you know, with the internet and stuff like you know, like what y'all got with the podcast, mm -hmm. you know, just do some old school, you know, old school, old school mixes and stuff like. And had a DJ talking like he just had a unique way of how he did what he did, and I just I always thought he was the dopest, you know. But I guess he never had nobody to really, you know, push him to pursue it, you know, end up, you know, me and my mom and had a family. So, you know, I guess he figured I got to right. pursue this. So when they get like serious, like when it was like, when you think, when did you think you could make a career out of music? Like what age? Because you, you our age. We just talked before we got on camera. You, you basically our age. You like basically like a year older than me. Right. And you and Shay probably like right at each other. Right. You know what I mean? Like, what age were you? Because you went to, what what high school you went to? I went to a pre uh, I went to Trailwell for my junior high, seventh through ninth grade, and I went to Northside one year. Okay. And then I went to, my last two years was at Trail. Okay. So it was probably during high school that you thought you could. When I got about 14, 13, 14, like I knew like, okay, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was still playing ball because I grew up around it. I grew up with Penny Hardaway, and, mm -hmm. and then I was around the Chris Garners and yep. you know all of these guys, you know, from the boys' club. Right, right, right. Like so mm -hmm. basketball was just in my DNA, and a lot of the Penny and a lot of the guys from the neighborhood would play in my backyard. Mm. That my daddy would let them play with them, you know, and they. This, this what kind of gave them they toughness. So I got to see that. So of course I had a love for basketball through that. But when I was about 13, I'm like, man, the music, what I want to do. Mm. And it was really. That's pretty early right there. You yeah. said 13? Yeah, about 13. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what it really was. It was really my favorite artist that really made me Tupac. Because. Mm. 90, I want to say maybe 90. Yeah, he's safe. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I might have been. That was like yeah. his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brenda had a baby day or something like that. This one. Right. Yeah. Right, right. right. When I heard those records, mm -hmm. I'm like. Yeah, because I want to say, I but now 13, 14 would have been like the Me Against the World. And yep, then the uh, uh, the all eyes on me, John. Right, right. The the pre death row, the pre death row. But even though, yeah, because I still like the death row Tupac, but the pre when was I'm like me against the world was the one before he went to jail. Yeah, he put out me against the world yeah. before he went to jail. Yeah, and then. Mm -hmm. But that was like so. Yeah, around that time was like okay, this this what I want to do, you know. And I was making music about. What I was seeing in my neighborhood about the poverty, what I, I was writing them kind of records mm -hmm. back then, even as a, a young child. Right. You know, like I was writing those. I remember I had this song called Survive. And Elliot Perry and a lot of the other guys from my neighborhood, like they were like, oh my God, this is, mm -hmm. you know, because it was just so, it was so deep. But this, that's what I wanted my music to do. I right. wanted to. I wanted people to feel the way I felt about brothers got a baby and keep your head up. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to feel the same way about my music. Mm -hmm. So I really wasn't big into Memphis rapping. Right. I listened to him because, of course, right. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. But I really wasn't big on, on you know, like. I gotta listen to Skinny Pimp. I gotta yeah. listen to Gangsta Black or something like that. Flair, Flair. Yeah, 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 definitely. Right. For me, for music, and yeah. I love those guys. You know? Yeah. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, but for me, yeah. like, I had a whole different mindset. I'm like, man, the way this man moved me with his 
You yeah. know, when he was like, they got money for wolves, can't feed the poor. Mm. See, it ain't no hope for the youth. The right. truth is, it ain't no hope. For when I future. was at a young age, yeah. hearing it, mm -hmm. and, you know, having lost friends to gun violence and, you know, seeing how drugs was in my community and junkies and stuff like this, yeah, right. that touched me more than anything that I ever heard. And mm. it made me say, man, that's what I want to do. And I want my music to move people the same way. Wow. Yeah, it's different. Like, I I can speak for myself. Like, at that age, 13, 14, like, you know, I wasn't I wasn't thinking, you know, probably in that vein. But I was I was more in the sports space and stuff like that. But, right. you know, for you for you to even think of that, think like that at that age is like to me saying you was, you know, ahead of your time. You know what I'm saying? In that regard, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, maybe were you were you thinking like that on like on so you know what I'm saying? The difference is <laughs> so like <laughs> he was thinking that and again, like we were talking a lot off camera and and it's just so funny how you can juxtapose, you know, the parallels of, of different things. Uh but you know, we we all grew up in the same church. Yeah. And um, you know, and, and everybody know like my my dad been a minister for a long time. And so for me, um, I got my start uh, really initially doing um, with my homeboys in the neighborhood, but it, it was similar around the same age, and I was on punishment, so I couldn't do it. So, like, right. but my folks would be at work, so I knew why they was at work. You know, I'm out because I knew exactly what time they get home. So I'm at my homeboy house. We record, man, and we going hard. And it's like, okay, I'm really feeling it. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, uh. We, we that's something we had in common because Pac was one of my favorite artists as well and we was talking off camera and I was like I felt like I betrayed Pac when I started listening to Big like because I heard you know and I was a Big right, Bone fan yeah, though yeah. right so they had the song with Big and it's like I felt like I was betraying Pac but um, I started doing the gospel because I knew that's the only way my dad would let me do it Yeah. so I wanted to rap so bad that like okay the only way I can do it is if and you know when you grow up in a in a church household, you know, in my family is nothing but ministers. So I knew, even though my mind wasn't there, like I knew enough scripture, right. enough word, and everything like that that I could convincingly write a song. And uh, like I don't know if you remember, like you know, at the church and stuff, New Year's and stuff, we'd right. be out there rapping and everything like that. But I knew pops would let me do it if I was rapping it this way. Yeah. And so uh, for me, at some point, I guess the change was like it was like okay. I'm going to be doing this at some point. Like, I can't be, you know, running around out here, you know. In the right. Like, if I'm rapping it, like, I, I just felt some type of way about it. And I guess maybe it's because the church we grew up in and the parents that we had, like, mm. you know, as far as I know, you know, your dad been a solid dude. You know what I'm saying? Not no hypocrite. Dad, been right. Person, but but this, that's why I shout my parents out. Yeah. My dad especially because... They didn't want, you know, like, you ain't finna be rapping about no man, kids and girls, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I just, Dad, just listen to mm, Pop. Right. Just listen. Like, this what I'm gonna do. Just listen. Listen to the message. And when I got my dad to listen, mm. when I finally got him to listen mm -hmm. to the message, and my dad was like, wow, like, all I knew was what they showed on TV. Mm hmm Yeah. And so that opened it up to like, do this, mm. do it. You can do it, right? You know what I'm saying? And and my 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 dad my my dad and I'm so real, man. Like, and that's that's why I'm the way I am. Like, I used to have people to tell me, man, your music so inspirational, man. Why don't you just do gospel, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And like. Why would I put a label on my music? Yeah. Because think about it. Think about this. If you don't eat seafood and the restaurant has seafood, like just say they say we seafood methods. Right. You probably never go in that place, but they might have some of the best hamburgers. They might have some of the best chicken wings that you ever had, but you would never know because because of their title. Right. So the point I'm making is when you put that label on for me, 
when you put that label on gospel rapping, I'm trying to reach the people that ain't in church. Right. I'm trying to reach the people that's standing on the corner with the pistols that's selling dope to the junkies. Mm-hmm. They ain't picking up listening to something that says gospel. Right. I just a gospel rap. I don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. So how can I how can I reach them that way? I need to I need them to be able to identify with me. I need them to be able to look at me and say, "Man, yeah, dude, from where I'm from, he like me. Let me check that out." Right. Because I know when you check it out, then you're gonna get the message. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I used to always tell people like, "I ain't no gospel rapper. I just make real music." Right. And, and see, that was not even like a burden, like. For me, cause I think it's, it's really both sides to, to that. And I think it's clear, like, when people, certain people have different burdens to preach the gospel in their music, you know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, that's for them, you know what I'm saying? Right. But then, you know, others that, you know, have your perspective, you know what I mean? I think it's, you know, good and fine and well, well within their rights because you have a vision behind what you're trying to do. You right. know what I'm saying? It's just... For me, I, personally, I know when people kind of, you know, kind of try to mix in both, I guess. You right. know what I'm saying? That's where I kind of be like, bro, like, right. what right. you what you trying, you know what I'm saying? What you trying to do? Because at the end of the day, I know people, I know you grow with people like, with like Lecrae and other people yeah. like that. Like, they had a burden to preach the gospel in their music and they their reach was wide within that. You know right. what I'm saying? Well, so, I think, and, and like where I was going, you know, with like knowing... Cause like like I know your folks, you just right. like you know mine. Like I know knew your pops. Three of the most solid dudes I know, you know. And my thing is like I guess I felt like if I'm gonna be doing, if I'm gonna put myself in this box, you you slick almost like a preacher. You know right. what I'm saying? And Pretty so like much. now you know, yeah. If, if 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 we let's say we go to the shake, if we see our pastor in the shake time, <laughs> like Sunday, you can't tell me nothing. Like I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. <laughs> Cause you you throwing and you got way more dollars than what I got. You, you so, partaking in exactly. the buffet and and, and you know dollars like me. Or, like I'm gonna I'm gonna use this for an example. Like I was going to a gym hooping with a couple of partners of mine. Um, this ain't been about a year ago, uh-huh. and they turn on the music while we. So they playing Gotti. They playing some of my old you know playlists. You yeah. know, some of my old music. And, yeah. Uh, you know, just playing music. So the preacher come in, I know you got, I know you can't play that in my church, man. Come on, man. Now we in the gym, but I respect you. Know? So I said, man, put on some old gospel rap, man. You know, yeah, man. man. So I put on Lecrae. Yeah. We hooping, yeah, you know, you know they be bothering anybody. Yeah. It's gospel, right? And so this. Like yeah. so, that's why not because yeah. right, yeah. You hear the music like they sound. He's he yeah. rapping just like any of the other rappers, mm-hmm. right? Just with a message, with a message. But yeah. because of the the the, the, the box that the they name of it, right, right, right. They never listened to him. They right. never heard it. So now when yeah. they hear the music, they can't even believe like this this gospel. Right. Like this is what they saying. Yeah. And so that's why I myself. Never did it because I don't want to be limited to. I mean, because it's like with anything, like if even with not just rap, even with gospel music, yeah. Like you got people that's like quote unquote Christian Christians sanctified house. Like I ain't listening to secular music, right? But you will miss out on a, a record that might get you through, like a, a "You Save Me." I can't right. Whoa. Cause you don't listen to secular music. Oh, Mariah Carey song. Because Cause she got love. The, the yeah. title that's put right. on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For so sure. I vow to never put a title on nothing I do. Even when it comes to gangsters, like I don't. You know, when I was putting out the certified, and I don't make no gangster music. I just make music. I'm just right. talking about my experiences. What I, it ain't gangster music. It ain't trap music. It ain't street music. It's music. Right. Because. Every day is different, dog. Every day is different. My days ain't the same. 
You know what I'm saying? Talking about like I, different moods yeah, and different. Yeah, I might yeah, wake yeah. up mad today. Yeah, I might wake up happy tomorrow. I might wake up sad the next day. I, you know what I'm saying? So I might I'm gonna write about different different things. Like that's why I don't respect artists who music is always the same. Mm -hmm. Like every song you do is you hard, you strap, you killing, you gangster, you you this right because. That's not you, you all the can't time. Be your life, not all the day. time, right? Yeah, you ain't. You see, you got a ton of bricks. You know, this is all you rapping yeah. about, right? Day. So, you no, know I, I mean, if you always moving bricks and that's all you're doing every day, you wouldn't be a very successful rapper because you ain't got time to right. be in the studio if you out here yeah. moving weight. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you got a yeah. fam, family or a daughter. You love you loving somebody at some point in the day. Are you giving somebody something? And I you know think what I'm saying? The world is like this. And I think that's why you got guys like Drake, who are so big, and 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 Kendrick Lamar, because even we go back to pop, like that's why pop was so big because the music appealed to more people. Right. Because mm -hmm. I ain't just giving you hit them up and I straight. I'm a straight rider. I'm giving right. you dear mama. Right. So Brenda's for the got a baby. Who don't want to listen to yeah. the. The so-called gangster music, the street music, or whatever. Yeah, I love pop for the keeping your heads up, the 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 I ain't mad at you, the the uh, yeah. heaven got a ghetto and and, and right. And Never rooms. call you bitch you like that. Right. That's why they, you know, that's why guys like like a lot of guys in Memphis, I feel like didn't get as big as they should have because yeah. they weren't versatile. Within the music, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I do, I do wonder myself. Like, how did you, uh, like, get in mix with uh, hypnotized minds and three six and now? Were you like still like uh, high school, out of high school? Um, well, certified took out, and then I just started, that, that was the name of song. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, was, that was the record that took out for me. I'm certified. Okay, and. Uh, no, independent on my own. Right. Me and the partner of mine, uh, he was helping me with the music. You know, man, we grinded that record. It took off regionally. You know, it was a real success in Atlanta and Alabama. And, uh, so y'all were kind of doing like your own work yourself, like yeah, out, out the trunk yeah, and yeah. doing that? Okay. Going, you know, we had our own truck wrap and we just grinding and the record took off. And uh, I went to Sony for a deal and we couldn't work nothing out. Then I had a situation with Universal and what happened was, this this is what happened. Project Pan had just got out of jail and my first cousin's girlfriend used to braid his hair. Mm -hmm. And they let him hear my music and he and he was like, man, it didn't it, it, it do hard. Right. It hard. He liked the fact that yeah. Um, he found his. Well, you know, they dad a preacher. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But him spending that last stint in jail, he really mm -hmm. started to develop his own relationship. Right. Yeah. So when he listened to my mixtape and he was hearing some of the records, on I was like, man, he do know God too. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing, you know, he mess with you on that. Yeah, him. yeah. So we met, mm -hmm. and we got cool. And we started talking, and most of our conversations was never about music. It was about God. Mm -hmm. you know, we talked about God a lot. So when I got an offer from Universal, they wanted to give me 15% of my publishing. I think it was $100,000 and 15% of my publishing. And I was telling them, I'm like, man, I ain't going to take it. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. was like, man, you know what? Man, put all your, your shows and stuff on the DVD, and I'm going to take it to Juicy. Mm. This is how that situation came about. He took it to Juicy, and Juicy was like, man, they really don't do, like, mm -hmm. know, looking at how my shows were packed. Right. How everybody was singing the songs. And that's how we worked it out, you know what I'm saying? So I took less money and got, you know, more of my publishing. Mm -hmm. We did it like that. That's what's up. That was up. So that's probably like probably like around oh four, oh five. Oh six, oh seven. Oh six, oh seven. Okay, okay. And so 
I remember we actually what was it the last episode we did we, yeah, we was we, looking we was at watching the, uh, we was looking at the, the lollipop video giant. the old uh, lollipop giant. yeah yeah we like yeah we were yeah. actually looking at that Cause I, honestly I for, I actually I forgot about yeah he forgot about the song I forgot about the song and then you know I said but I remember not the video I never I don't, know, I don't think I ever seen a video I remember the song right. but then we saw I said dang they had a video to it. You know what I'm saying? So we look. I was like two videos. It was two videos. Videos. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so and that did that did pretty good, didn't it? Didn't that record did pretty like on the Billboard and all that stuff, right? It, it was the number one rap song in the country for a minute, but I think on Billboard it, I want to say maybe thirteen it was number thirteen or something on Billboard. Yeah. So out of the top. So for those of you all who don't know, <laughs> out of the top, what is it? One hundred or two hundred? Billboard 200. 200. So out of the top 200 songs, that song was number 13 out of 200. Mm. So so if you can get a, a concept of that, like if you graduated with 200 people and you're number 13, that means you're like at the top. That's good. And the, the number one rap song. And so with being from Memphis, like I, I grew up, I'm kind of similar like you. Like obviously I got two older brothers, you know, one of them was in the gang life, you know, Tommy. Right. You know oh, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Tommy. You know what I mean? So he hooked me up with Mystic Styles like early. You know what I'm saying? I'm probably like nine or ten years old. But before then, like I'm person, I'm on like, you know, uh MC Light, Queen Latifah. This what I was um uh uh what was um what's that what can't keep running away? Like them, like Pharisee, oh, the Pharisee. Yeah, yeah, yeah the like, far side. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. and so you know, so w me personally, I've heard different stories about people with hypnotized and stuff like that. So did you have you did you learn anything good while you was with them, as far as like you know life lessons or you know how you deal yourself in the music industry and stuff like that? I can't really honestly say that I did. Uh, I didn't really have. A, I had a, a real cool relationship with Juicy. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, to this day, me and Pat still like this. He just was uh, preaching to me yesterday. <laughs> Pat different, bro. I, I had made a post. I yeah. made a post about the wings. Mm -hmm. About the wings, and I said, self made. And uh, he DM'd me, he said, uh uh, uh change that, change that. It. it ain't self made, it's God made. See, can't be self made because cause he said, he said, because God is the source and, and the belly wings and the sauce is just the channel. And the channel ain't nothing without the source. I said, Mike, keep laying it on me. Bro. Yeah, hey. my, look, my boy Pat, I do, I, I do want to say this because I don't know if I, I, I told you about this, uh, Rag, but just uh, we know actually. Um, Pat gonna be featured on the. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. He said, "No, you can't, can't let nobody hear that, though." We can't. So that, yeah, okay, that's okay. A, like he gonna have to release that. Okay. But yeah, but but it's but yeah. legit though. But like, yeah, Pat, but, Pat is legit. Yeah, Pat. That's Pat, all we are gonna say. We will tell y'all camera. Yeah, yeah. Pat, Pat, he Pat, legit. Pat is legit. One like, hundred. Just the he's stuff. He's not making that up. Yeah, just, he's just, not making that up. Just the stuff that I've been seeing, like in different interviews that I've seen, like on YouTube and stuff, and I, I've been getting like a different. Like Pat is like. This is this the kicker that really got me. He Pat. even looks different. If you even look like he looks like younger than this, what this, he is, it's like he got a glow yeah. almost. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. the kicker that got with me because he was like, I don't know what it was. He was just like, man, somebody asked him like, man, what you listen to now? Who you bumping now? Who who are the young rappers or something you listen to today? Pat was like, man, I don't really like ain't be listening to him like that. He said, he said I listen to Charles Caps, and I don't even know nobody like Charles. If you like in gospel and he, like he's a, f a famous preacher, like Charles Caps, like he listened to his tapes, mm -hmm. like he's very big into, uh, you know, positive confessions and stuff like that. When I said when I heard that Pat was listening to Charles Caps, I was like, OK, Pat for real. Well, see, I'm going to tell you. Pat, Pat for real, for real. Been, and, and he told me this. He said, man, yo, you know, you really can't force things on people. You have to let them get there in their own time because when I left hmm. three six mafia, when I left that situation, me and had a talk and I think this may have been like a, 
one of the last times we had talked for years. Me and Pat didn't talk for probably about 10 years. And it wasn't nothing that he did. Yeah. I was bitter about about the situation with with his brother and them, you know. And, and, and shout out to Juicy. Shout out to Juicy. Juicy. Juicy tried to make things as right as he could when I left. He even cut me a check, a nice check, when I left. And he, man, if you ever need me for anything, Beats, whatever, whatever. I got you, bro. You That's dope. Talented, blah, so shout out to Juice. Mm. But I was just bitter because I had built built myself up, and with them not pushing me and doing what they said they were gonna do, pretty much brought me back to zero. You know how the music industry is like when you right. hot, you gotta stay hot. You got a window. It already take you. A lot to right. get a high. long time to get like, high. I didn't just come up with right. the, with certifying them records yeah. in one year and get hot. Like that was in '06. I was grinding from yeah. 1999. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Putting out different records, trying to find yeah. a record that was stick, politicking with DJs, building relationships and stuff. So from '99 mm. to '06, I finally boom got. So now imagine going to a level where these folks are supposed to take you to the next level and they don't for two, three years and then your buzz just go dwindle away. Mm. So now I got caught up trying to rekindle a buzz or trying to rebrand myself. I got gotcha. you. Basically start back from, from zero. And got to kind of do it yourself for right. the most part since you left that situation. Right. Yeah. So, but, uh, but, but going back to Pat, I told him one day, I said, man, I said, Pat, why don't you change up your message and your music? I was like, I was like, because I knew Patrick no, Houston. That what Pat said to you or you said no, to that's Pat? What I said to that's you. what you, okay. Because I knew Patrick Houston. Yeah, right. We talked every day and I knew what our conversations was like. I knew what his heart was. Yep. I knew he wanted the same kick dope Project Pat, mm-hmm. but he was still making those records. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, but Pat, that ain't you. You know what I'm saying? I was like, but when you when you make them records and you rap it, these kids believe that that's, that's you. you. Right. And he was like, well, man, oh, what did he tell me? Man, you know, man, it's entertainment. Like Denzel Washington do try. I'm like, Pat, that's different. <laughs> I'm like, bro, we know Denzel Washington ain't in no movie killing nobody. Right. We know it's just a movie. But anyway, I, I said that to say yeah. this. It's amazing to see ten years later mm-hmm. that he, he he doing what I said ten years ago, but he had to find his own way. And we talked about that. It was like, man, sometimes we try to beat it on people. And he was like, You can't do that. You right. have to put it in the universe and then step back and let God take care of the rest. You know what I'm saying? Pat is real <clears throat> like I said, I, I've never I've met him one time, but I mean clearly, but I don't know him at all, but you know, I I keep up with him in different spaces, like on social yeah. media, his interviews, and just for me, just witnessing, like he's very intentional, and in like he was on Vlad TV. Yeah, yeah he did yeah. a lot of stuff mm-hmm. on Vlad, and he was real intentional. He didn't let Vlad kind of cake him into, yeah, no, because yeah, Vlad, bait Vlad, him into Vlad, was, stuff. Vlad will say stuff like, yep. and I mean, you know, shout out to Vlad TV. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, I watch a lot of their stuff, but Vlad. Is a self proclaimed atheist, right? And and he will always, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. and he'll always say stuff like, "Oh, well, no, you got that because you hustled, or you got that because you grind, or right. you know, you you got that because you work hard." And and Pat would say stuff like, "No, I work hard, but that was God, like the Lord gave yep. me that, or God gave me that, yep. or you know, the Lord be, you know, was talking to me." And it's like every time it kind of to go back to like when you said the self made thing, like every time it it tried to shift to like you did that, it. it Pat would always bring it right back to no, God got me through that or the Lord got me through that. So, uh, he like like I said, he he even like as I was looking at him, cause I was like, damn, that look like Pat. And then and then then I saw the, the cap. I'm like, oh, that yeah, is Pat. But like I said, look, he looks, you know what I'm saying, different. Like he looks like he got a, a a glow about him almost. Like it's hard to explain, but like if you look at him, and then I was reading some of the comments, and it's like, man. Mm-hmm. Like how is Pat aging backwards? You know what I'm saying? I've but always been a, 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 ever since I met him 15 years ago. He always been real. Uh, always been a good dude. 
And I tell people all the time, like in this industry, Pat, A Ball and MJG, and Young Noble from the mm. Outlaws, Outlaw, right? Yeah. The realest people I've ever met. Yeah. You know, with. Oh, and I remember you had posted the joint with uh uh with with Ball and them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, cause I think I think I hit you up after like, man. Uh, I know some of Ball and them uh, projects. Yeah. yeah. Some of my projects, but they just real brothers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, if 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 a lot of the other hip hop artists just worldwide were like those guys, man. Ooh. It's but you know what though? I think that game. that because when you talk about how authentic those dudes are, like we know them, but we feel like they're not as high as they should be. You know what I'm saying? But but like I and but I think that that's part of the reason why. Because when you are an authentic person, when you are a genuine cat like that, like they don't I I don't think that the system is set up for us to be in a position of where people who got your message you might can get there, but they don't want to keep you there. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that don't sell as well as the BS that, the, the other BS that be out there. You know what I'm saying? It's always get high, get drunk, kill somebody, you know what I'm saying? About our culture and our people, you know, we, uh, we see so much, so much tragic within our community. And we always crying out, man, something got to change, right? Mm-hmm. You see this all the time, like, Lord help us, Lord this and that. In in the 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 format for change is really simple, but nobody nobody don't want to change themselves. It's it's right. a simple formula, and that that's a good point that you bring up. That's I want to kind of get right into this whole thing with Dolph. You know what I'm saying? This whole oh, before up? you do that, what's up? Like my guy said, his hit, hit song was certified. You know what I'm saying? Oh, go, okay. Go I see YouTube where you did, but as you can see, <laughs> I am. You know what I'm saying? The presidential status is certified. Yes, like my guy, yes, Young Belly. So yes, go sir. look that up. Y'all give him some streams. You know what I'm saying? He got music on uh, what is it? Apple, Spotify, everywhere. everywhere. YouTube you know, music. You, you all look that. up Young Belly. Man. Y-U-N-G-V-E-L-I. One word. Y U N G V E L I. It'll be under the screen right there. It'll yeah, so the man, y'all make sure y'all get my guy some streams and like we Good talked music. about the merch. Good music. Y'all see we got our merch on. My guy J B the executive mindset. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, we showing. What you merch. got? What you got? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, he got it. okay. I didn't know he had his yeah. own. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, you can't get it nowhere else. The best song, best chicken, best fried chicken wing. Man, look, I'm it. Plug Austin, yourself. Austin P, okay. Tuesday through Saturday in my food truck. Me, myself, I'm there. Working. I'm cooking the chicken. Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Austin P. Right in front of the Starbucks. Come get the best hot wings in the city. What's the address Velis over there, you know? Wings. Veli's Wings. V-E-L-I-S. Wings. You can find me Velis on wing. Facebook, Instagram, wherever. I'm there. Velis Wing is that a, is it is it an address you know right like right in front of where your where your truck and stuff be at? It's, it's uh, the address is uh. I'm gonna tell you what. The no, he gonna pull it up. Okay, so I'm, I put I put up. it right down there too, so everybody yeah, so know. Had an address, so y'all can go and stop and get some wings, get, get some. some oh, and then man, man, look, he posted a picture with the fries he did, nigga. Ooh, y'all tripping? Fries, y'all is tripping. The fry, oh, man. Ooh. That's what I'm saying. Hey, look, he do the fries. Like, I, I don't even know what he had on the fry, but I was I, like, I, it I just looked like me, you're not finna work out that day. I, I gotta get on it. That's your cheat day. That's my cheat day. Okay. That's gotta, your cheat day. I gotta get it. Actually, I let the wife see your page the other day, and the first thing she looked at were the wings. 35, 45, <laughs> 35, 45 Austin. She P. said, Have you ever had no? I said, No, I ain't had no wings before, but I said, We're gonna, we gonna have to try it. I'm like, Yeah, we got it. We're gonna have to do that. We gonna have to do that. But yeah, before you before you got into that, like I said, I just wanted people to see. So you know, we plug my guy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Stuff is gonna be at the bottom of the screen. But yep. you know, we talked about the merch, and I know y'all might be wondering because normally my fit matches. I had on a different shirt, and then JB was like, "Oh, I got your shirt," and so like my fit don't match. I swung my shirt. But I got over. my presidential certified. He got the executive mindset. 
So, you know, those will be available soon. And if you are in the Memphis area, like my guy said, out in the Raleigh area, on your lunch break, if you got an off day, stop by 3545 Austin P. I promise you, you, you will not be disappointed. Blow your mind. Blow your mind. Now you, you got to try it now. You got to. You got to try it now because now you got to see the hype and realize it. Then you're going to put a review out there. And you're going to get your five stars. And he's been giving the presidential so, plug. And when yeah. you come, That's all. you got... I'll, don't come to the truck talking about you want some lemon pepper season wing. That's cool. You got to get the veli sauce. When you come see me, you got to get the veli sauce. Now, I saw you had you had a video where you you had the sauce. Like, is that sauce available for sale? Will people Not be able right to buy now. the sauce I'm, yet? I'm, I'm, I'm working out some, I got some big things. Because we, talk, we were talking off camera, and I, I meant to ask you that off camera, and I was like, not just yet, cause you know when when you when you living living the bachelor life like I am, like I, I cook at the house a lot. You know what I'm saying? And so I meal prep. So so what is, I do is all purpose, all purpose sauce, or just like no, it's like was it's for the it's my it's, wings. Sauce. Yeah, you, you can put, put it on it probably like, like when you're doing so your chicken me, and I, stuff I, like yeah, that. Yeah, I did. But, okay. put it on. I put it on my salmon. Mm, perfect. Man, it, like, it's okay. the thing. I might put I it in my gumbo. Like, when I make my gumbo, I, I might I put it in the gumbo. She, she just come pay me to make it, make her a big jug. She freeze what she don't use till it's gone. It sounds like it maybe uh, I don't know if y'all had it. It's kind of like from DC called Bumbo Sauce. Oh yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I'm talking about. That, mm. You can put it on wings. I doing something like that, but that's it. Sounds like that's what the valley is. And if, if you do that, that sounds like a game changer right there. Man, you can put it on anything, man. God gave me this recipe, man. Like I got like it's 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 it's, it's life changing. Go and get that sauce yeah. out, dog. Go and put that yeah. thing. You in gotta some do jars, it. Bro. And, and 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 again, we on here, our platform. We we did an episode last season where we talked about people kind of insult you when they say, "Oh, we see you got your little podcast." <laughs> I don't personally take it as an insult because right. I still, you know, I still you might see me delivering your mail. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like if you in Collierville, Cordova, or Hickory Hill, you might see me pull up in the mail truck. Yeah. So I'm not doing this for a living. So when somebody say, "Oh man, I saw your little podcast," I don't take it as an insult, right? You know, but um, you know, for me, like I see what you're doing, and our platform may not be as big as some other ones, but as long as you doing what you're doing, even if it is a little platform, we gonna use this little platform and we gonna plug you and pub you. And, and and you know, cause you you've uh, reposted some of our videos. We've been giving you shout outs. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? We've been giving you the love. You got that little truck, right? Man, ain't that food truck so look. Man, look. I said, man, I, I had this little junk rocking. Right, exactly. Right. This little junk be packed out, right? <laughs> With them four lined up, I had that joke of rocking. Yeah, man, have man, a line down the man, street. Look, man, it's, it's all about what you do man. with it. It don't matter how big it is. It don't matter how small it is. As long as you get the job done. What you do with it. That's what matters. Yep. Salute. That's what it do. What does it do? So yeah, that's a that's a big plug. So definitely go check out the Valley Wings, y'all. We actually I'm gonna try it myself so I can actually be vouching for this. Actually, it may be next week. I'll be coming yeah. to actually with some Valley Wings up here. Just you know what yeah. I'm saying. And like Munching I said, I've had them before. So for me, I'm not making it up. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a lot of times my work schedule does not permit. Like he shut down by the time I get home. But I've had them before, and like I said, it was worth every penny that I spent for him. You know what I'm saying? I pulled up on him when he was at the old uh, the restaurant spot on a uh, it was Covington Pike and Stage Road. Uh, it's it's what is it? It's like a Tim's or something now. Okay, right there. But he used to be in there, and he was doing his I thing in there. Had bought it from the from the Mexicans. Oh, mm. word. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dope, dope, dope. So, yo, y'all go do that and get to jump back on kind of a, yeah. a, a somber um, a subject. subject. But, you know, uh, the whole, you know, young Dolph thing. Actually, I did a, on my other podcast, I did a thing talking about the tragic loss of Dolph from a more spiritual right. perspective on that. But and check out the Preacher Man podcast, um, JB, if you haven't already. It's yeah, wherever yeah, yeah. streaming platform podcast. Check my guy out on the Preacher Man podcast. Yeah, check that out if y'all can. Uh but just from did you know did you know Dolph? Or have you, you met him? I've met him. Okay. I knew him. He he knows me, but uh we wouldn't Right. You know. Uh, the funny thing is though I got a friend of mine who's real close to him. And uh, we just did some business together. And in the midst of doing our business about two weeks ago, I got a record 
Mm-hmm. I got Juicy J, Bow, MJG, and I got a Kivo Metaverse. It's called United. Mm-hmm. It's and procrastination, man. It, it's a killer, huh? It's a killer. It's a killer. Yeah. Because yeah. I just talked to my partner. I said, man, look, I got a, I got this positive record I need to dolph on. I knew I could get him to do it mm-hmm. uh, because we had supposed to be some years ago, and we just never got around to it. And mm-hmm. uh, so my partner was like, "Yeah, man, I oh, I got some shades of doubt that he got to come get from me. And when he get with me, you know, I mm-hmm. rap with him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I just was like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm just focused on this truck right now. Mm-hmm. So I get to that." When I get to it, you know, mm-hmm. I because you know, the record pretty much put together as far as the production and stuff like that. I just would need to get his verse, so I get to it when I get to it. Yeah, you know, not thinking that something like this it would happen. Would happen. You know yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty tragic. Um, it was a few weeks ago. We, me and my wife, we, we go to Brother Jennifer sometimes, and we saw him and a couple of his partners out there. It was sitting right next to a table next to us. You know, out there, at Brother Jennifer's and. You know, my wife, she she wasn't familiar with Dolph, you know. Your favorite brunch spot. You know, that is our favorite brunch spot. You know, Brother Jennifer's out there. Uh, but we saw him out there and, um, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I, I'm not a, I just hate like a fanboy or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't, if I would have took a picture, it would have been because my homie, Corey, that's his favorite rapper. Hold up. Boom, yes, from D.C. Republican Re- Corps. Re- Republican Corps. Okay, so now, so you don't know Corps. Corps is a black dude, right? And, like, if you just had a regular conversation with him, you're like, oh, okay, man, cool, bro. This nigga is, like, the Republican of our republic. Like, if you heard him talking about some politics stuff, you'd think, like, okay, this man from, like, the hills or somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, like this a white dude talking. So, like, for him uh, to say that, that Dolph is his favorite artist, it's like. Nah, Dolph was a favorite artist, like, for real. Yeah, and he that's was, crazy. Uh, you know, he felt some type of way, you know, necessarily about it. So, I respected Dolph, you know what I'm saying? I can't say that I bumped him like that, like that, you know what I'm saying? But I knew of his music and, you know, stuff of that nature. But, and uh, the wife was the one that actually told me. She hit me up. I was working right up here, uh, working from home, and. Yeah, you know the guy we saw at the brunch spot. You know they said he got shot. You know in front of the uh, Makita's Makita, uh, cookies because she liked those cookies too, the butter cookies out there. And um, and then you know every hour just more information, yeah. more you know kind of what was happening, and you know, it was it, just tragic, man. It hit me because you know I always tell people like I, I don't never disclaim Raleigh. You know what I'm saying because I've <laughs> lived in Raleigh for. A long time, I graduated from Raleigh, Egypt, you know, proud representative of them pharaohs. Um, but <laughs> I always say I'm I'm from Raleigh by way of South Memphis. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like, when people say, "Oh man, you ain't from South," where you from? When I say, "Oh, Saxon and Walker," you know, Bellevue and Mclemore, you know, Preston, Gaither. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, no, you from South Memphis? Really? Like, that's where I grew up before we moved out to Raleigh. Yeah. And then when we moved out to Raleigh, like my summers, my weekends, I was right back there. So. You know, I know a lot of people, uh, my, my cousin Joseph, mm-hmm. you know, uh, actually went to school with Dolph. Mm-hmm. And, and he made a, a beautiful post where he was saying, like, y'all knew young Dolph. You know, he said, I knew Ada, like, he put his whole name on there. Um, girl I work with at the post office. Mm-hmm. Like, she graduated from Hamilton, from South Memphis. It hit close to me because there's a lot of people that I know. Uh, my guy, Coach E, whose son I told you play for uh, Southwest. Right. Like. I always was like he was telling me years ago, like, "Hey, Rag, this the next one up." I'm like, "Man, he's straight," but now nah, Rag, I'm telling you, like, he finna be on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, so shout out to my guy, Coach E. Um, but it hit me because being from South Memphis and the connotation that comes with, and you probably can identify when you say you from North Memphis or whatever, or I'm repping North or from South or wherever. People kind of look at you like. Oh, you from there. But when you see somebody from where you from and the positive things that he was doing, like giving back is an understatement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he gave back. I didn't know. Uh, I saw Steven Jackson posted some stuff yeah. where he was talking to some kids and he called Dolph on FaceTime and Dolph on FaceTime started talking to the kids that Steven Jackson was talking to. So here's a guy who's from our backyard 
who was bigger than just his music. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he was about um, the change. And so I guess, you know, Veli, we're going to ask you, like, what, what do you think about that as somebody who we, we know about the entrepreneur side? And I, I ain't knocking it, like I said, because, you know, I, 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 if with, I if with the wings. But to me, you're going to always be, whether it's Young D, Young Veli, you know, I rock with you, you know what I'm saying, as an artist. So as an artist, do you feel like we have a responsibility in what we convey and what we speak, you know? Of course, of course we do. But the, the biggest thing to me is, is what we were just talking about. Like, I just don't get how we see all this, these tragic things happen in our community yeah. time and time again. And nobody, it, we will boycott. I got a record called Lessons, and I said in the record, I said we boycott over blackface, but the killing's done by a blackface. Mm -hmm. And the uproar over racism. <laughs> But I was robbed by my, my own, own race. race. Mm -hmm. I don't get how we keep saying we want better, but we not willing to do the things that it's going to take for us to see better. And what I mean by this, and I'm using, we talking music now. Mm -hmm. All of us who have a relationship with God know that Satan was the minister of music. Mm -hmm. We all know, even without that, we all know what music does to us. Right. Good or bad, happy or sad. Mm -hmm. Right? We know this. You got DJs and radio stations. All they do is promote this 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 trap music that right. I call I call garbage. And I'm just gonna be honest, right. I call right. it garbage. Because it's detrimental to our people. Right. You don't see this happen in the R and B community. You don't see it happen country. in country music. You don't see it happen with rock. Pop. Pop, none of that. It's only in our community that this happens over and over. You see rappers dying like Like it's nothing. Like it's and it's yeah, almost like we say, become numb to it. What they say, dropping like flies, because yeah. it's like you said. I, we can we we can go another hour talking about this, honestly. But I don't even, you know what I'm saying. But it just hurt me. It's crazy. It hurt me, bro, to know that we have the power to change it, and but we just not willing as a community to change ourselves. Uh, what I mean by that is this. People doing what they doing because it's it's a, it's it's the thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because people celebrate it. People celebrate the shooter. People celebrate the rob. You know what I'm saying? Like I know people right now. I see people on my Facebook timeline. People I went to school with. Even some relatives. They cheer. Man, my my nigga, he was like he a killer. He 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 he, mm -hmm. he the shooter. He like he gonna rob something. Right. He gonna, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all cool until it happens. Until it happen. right. to come to your doorstep. Until it's your dad. And then it's so until sad. Until it's your sister. Right. Until it's your cousin. Yeah. Until it's your best friend. Then when it happened to them, now everybody, now you want to cry about change. Well, what is, what, what the change at when you know your little cousin out here robbing and instead of you telling him, hey, hey, cool, man. Right. You on that? Yeah. You can't come around me, bro. I ain't yeah. that ain't cool. Right. I ain't with that. Right. That ain't what's up. Yeah. Now you don't go take from nobody that's out here grinding and working and giving your own dick. Nigga, that's a hater. Yeah. You a hater, cuz. Mm hmm We don't do that. We cheer them on. Right. We, we, we make it seem like it's cool. Yeah. It's the thing. Just like with everything else. It's cool to be ratchet. Mm -hmm. All all of these things that's negative, we sign off on 
and we cool with it. Until, until it's until us. It, it, until it happens. Like, I ain't trying to be on her rapping and saying my lyrics, but I'm just saying, like, I put this stuff in my music. Do it, yeah. No, man, no. You, do I, you want to hear it? Man, plug it. In the verse, I said, uh, I said uh, it's a record I got called Let Us Live. And in the record, I basically was saying how, you know, uh, nobody really cares until this is their own. And this is how serious we are as a community. Yeah. We don't care until it's, it's, it's somebody that we love. You know what I'm saying? And, and the only way the community is going to get better is when we start caring, period. When it, it comes to a point where it's just unacceptable. When, it, like, my nephew, you can't come around, you can't hang around me, and you own this, and you doing this. My little mm-hmm. cousin, I can't. So if you want to be in my circle and you want to be around me, you got to move the way I'm moving. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to be on what I'm on. Yeah. And and this is this is how big homies and this is how OGs start the transformation of the little homies mm-hmm. because the young guys is looking up to us. Mm-hmm. If we ain't co-signing this, then y'all got to get over there with it. Right. Now, if y'all want to go over there and kill each other, cool. Right. But we ain't going to stand for that. Over here, right? Yeah. You ain't finna come over here and rob nobody, grandma. You ain't finna come over here and rob nobody's sister, nobody's mama, nobody's brother. We ain't, we ain't down. That ain't, that that ain't, ain't what's what up. See, and you said something a couple sentences back where I think where a lot of us in our community we uh, blame the white people for capitalizing on our culture, right? You know what I'm saying? Which they do. You know what I'm saying? But the but the thing is, they do it pretty much kind of like for entertainment but we we exude we absorb it as a lifestyle mm-hmm. in our community you know what right. i'm saying we shoot shoot kill kill we for real do that right. the white folks out there they just kind of be playing with it just like to capitalize on it right. you know what no I'm no they, they they only like the only time they not playing with it is when they doing it against us but i will say i think they they're able to do it to us because we give them permission message mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like like because if every artist had a standard where it's like i'm not gonna make this music i'm not gonna do like we we was talking off camera and we both had experiences where you know he had people telling him you gotta make this type of record to get on you know what i'm saying we this is cool over here but you need these records to get on you know what i'm saying like i was telling him i had and we've had this conversation i had a dj here matter of fact when we did that uh showcase you know what I'm back saying? It was the, yeah, yeah, back in the day, and dude was there, and he was like, "Man, you can rap, you're a lyricist, you know, but I need you to make trap music." Hmm. And and, the, and and I'm not gonna, I ain't gonna say his name. I told him I'm, I'm not gonna say his name because I, I ain't no shit. About, but the niggas about. that he was trying to push, like, what did they really do? Yeah. And I'm I'm not hate, I'm not hating on him, but I'm just saying, he like, took, he, he was my, on that. He took my money too. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. But like, what did they? Re- but but he wanted to push this negativity, right? And so the guys that you was hitching your wagon to. They didn't really do nothing because was that the one where we should have won or something? Yeah, the no, showcase, no, we but he did right because I yeah because I did it and he picked he picked you know, the other bird. Yep, okay. but right. I'm just saying they want to perpetuate us yeah. doing that, and but as a whole, what, Young what, Bella's the exception. What really hurts me though, dog, is is I can go all around the world, and this has happened like. No, no bull jive. Right. I've been in the studio with artists from jive records, all kind of labels, Atlanta, whatever, all around the world. I never forget. I got a partner. He from New York. Him and his wife was living in Atlanta, and when I used to go to Atlanta, you know, he he, he did security for Big and all them back in the day. He, he old. He's like fifty seven now. So when I go to Atlanta. You know, this was my friend, but mm-hmm. of course he like rolling with me to the studios and stuff right. like that too. As you know, just my extra layer of, of security. Right, you know, protect me and him, but right. mm-hmm. it's my little brother. I got your back. I'm gonna roll with you. Yeah. So we in the studio one day, and uh, we in the studio with these producers and uh, artists from Jive Records. They they playing, you know, they they just playing records, you know, and some of the records, you know. Good records, cool records, but you know, the same old, same old, you know, the club, you know. 
Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Yeah, that's what I hear this song. Like, so, right, let's, right, we, we should play it our last little, let us play some of yours. Don't, you want to hear, you know, what you got? I turn my music on. I want to say after the second song, it might have been the first song, niggas ran up at the studio. Mm. One of the dudes pulled my pot and said, nigga, this nigga sound like he already up there with Jay Z now. Yeah. Like, and I get this everywhere I go. He from Memphis? Yeah. Man, how he ain't bigger than so and so and so and so and so and so and so. Right. Yep. And that's the one thing that I always just, I just, used to have to deal with God about it. It's like, I don't understand why, like, I'm I'm putting out positive influence, positive message, mm-hmm. positive power in what I'm doing, God. How, I, how why, why isn't my music reaching the masses, but these folks over here <laughs> just telling these kids to go slang a brick and throw right. your right. sense up and Shoot your chop on that. Yeah. All this. Everybody, you know, they music touching everybody. They, they always. It's the agenda. Always bothered me, man. It's an it's an agenda when you. When you when you look at you know most of the the top labels and you know different stuff of that nature like, um, was it the Memphis rapper uh, Chopper? He, uh, you know how he came out, yeah. but then recently, over the last six months or something, he was like, he want to be more positive or something in his music because he's, he's seen, you know, how, you know, putting all these guns and stuff in the videos can be kind of sending the wrong message, right. you know what I'm saying, toward, you know, kind of his peers and the youth. And I don't mean to cut you off, but oh, yeah. that's where I go back to our people because yeah. even though I do feel like it's an agenda, but at the same time, we don't have to accept the agenda. Right. So that's why I go back to saying that right. we the ones that don't want to change our people because because whatever they push on us, we accept it and we roll with it. Right. Is that my, well, even for agenda, it can be even our own agenda, like a money. Because it's like, look, I can't well, I ain't talking about the rappers. What I what I'm talking about is I'm gonna give you an example of what I mean by this. If a rapper put out a record talking about those type of things. Mm. If the people don't listen to it, if the DJ don't play it, right. then it goes nowhere. Right, right. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, right? I got you. Yeah. So if, if if I don't stream it, if the radio if if the DJ at the radio station or the DJ at the club say, I ain't playing it. Right. It's detrimental to my community. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. but they don't they they go along with it. They play it. When they play it, Man, we, we listen turn to up. it. We sing it. Yeah. We make right. lives. Mm-hmm. We get on the lives with the eye gun. Right. The girls get on there with they boot out. Yeah. They throw it and they do this. Yeah. They have their little kids in the video. Yeah. And they doing yeah. it. Yeah. And it's just a it's just a never ending cycle. Yeah. But I go right back to go like, along, get along. All go bad though. Then his rest in peace. Oh, be, it didn't have to be that way. Change. And uh, we got to do Memphis. We got this ain't no Memphis thing. Thank this you. This is a this is a uh, the black community thing. Say that yeah. again, man. Come say it one more time. What you no just Memphis said. Thing. It ain't no Memphis thing. Because I don't know if y'all this is so in every urban black community across the world. This is what we doing. Yeah. This is what we doing. Yeah. And I keep preaching. Over when when, when Dolph died, I made a post about it. I don't mm-hmm. know if you saw it. When Dolph died, I woke up to it, and, and it, it it really pissed me off, man. Mm. I woke up to man, yeah, I'm like Kia Shine. He said he just finna do positive music and that. And this rapper said, man, the music got to change the direction of the music. I've been doing this shit for twelve years, right? But it takes some as tragic and. I've you been know what I'm saying? saying this for 12 years. Yeah. I've been preaching this in my music for 12 years. Yeah. But he said but something earlier, though. For a beloved rapper 
or yours to die for you to. It really took yeah. for you to open your eyes up to understand, like crazy. But like, yeah, it's, it's but he said something early though, like it, it's gonna change for a minute, but then it's gonna go right back yeah. to more of the same because people don't want to change. No, yeah. that's that's why our community crazy. will always be in the predicament that it's in because we and and I, I always say we because I'm talking about the the black community as a whole. We don't want to change. No, we. We say we want to. Yeah. We say we want right. to. The reason why <laughs> you got all these so-called woke people now mm -hmm. who all of a sudden don't believe in God or this white man God. Right, right, right. Because you don't want to change from your your wicked right. ways. You want to you want to do what you want to do. Right. And so to feel comfortable in doing what you want to do, mm -hmm. you want to denounce this because. When you denounce this, that feel you feel like it justifies you being able to do what you're doing. I can, you know, I can just go out here and sleep around now, and I can. And it, it, it like I know I'm getting off subject, but this is a podcast, right? Right, yeah, right, so right. We, Are you good? We help somebody for sure. Yeah, you know for what sure. I'm saying? It's so simple to 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 really see how God's word and and how His law line up to know that it's real. I give a prime example. He said, you sh you, we should have sex before we get married, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you want to say God ain't real, but sit back and think about this for a minute. Why would God tell me not to have sex until I'm married? Okay, first of all, if a man is willing to marry a woman, right? Nine times out of ten, he's going to be even more committed to staying there with his family and being in his kids' life. Mm. So I'm I'm looking at what God's showing. He telling right, you right. don't don't go out here having sex right. before you get married. Because guess what you do? You lay down, you have sex, you get pregnant with a man who don't want to marry you, and then more times than likely, he ain't going to be ready to be committed to taking care of no kids. So now you're a single mother. But you won't be a single mother if you went about it the mm -hmm. way God See, See, and even when you say that, like, it's people, when you, when they think about the sex before, not having sex before marriage and stuff like that, they're looking at it as, you know, maybe God is trying to limit us. You know what I'm saying? Except, you know, God is really trying to protect us. To you know what I'm saying? Right. So from ourselves. From, right. yeah. And even on the flip side with the man part. Yeah. Now you got to build a baby mama. Mm -hmm. Now you're on child support. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with all these, taking all mm -hmm. your check and all this because you, you disobeyed God and you did it your way. And this is just. The after effect of right. like God said, like you said, He said, and we all make mistakes. Yeah, we all have, and we're gonna make more mistakes. But I just want people to see all you gotta do is is is, is study this book and read this book for yourself, and then just go back and just sit back and look at life. God show you in every way that it's real, mm -hmm. in yeah. every way. Yeah. Like, people want to say, man, the universe, man, 10, 12, 20,000 years ago when these folks found this book, it was in there about speaking things into existence. Yeah. God told you that. Yeah. yeah. But you want to say, now you want to use the, the universe. To right. To the universe. You know, then you want to say the Bible is the, is the, is the white man's book. The white man did that. The Bible was out. Way before, before. We were even enslaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and then I mean, even even the about? first, the yeah. first, everybody in the Bible who supposedly wrote books of the Bible, if you study historically, were people who looked like us. Yep. The first Christian right. church, the oldest Christian church in the world, is in Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? It's like so that that's in Africa. Those are black people. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, like to your point, if you it, it not only has it been in there, but if you want to go from a historical standpoint and go back, it was written by people so, who look like so, us in terms it's of. It's so amazing how the devil really have blinders on people that they can't even see what's right in front, even just from the from birth. Even yeah. from a reasonable, or logical standpoint, you should you like A plus B equals yeah, C, but they don't. Like you can look at 
you can look at nothing is without creation. Yeah. Nothing in this world. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Not the juice. Somebody had to make the, the cup. Somebody made the, this mic. Somebody made the TV, this house, the car, the clothes you put on. Yeah. Somebody made it. Mm-hmm. Somebody made it. Nothing. So you're going to believe in a Big Bang Theory when everything in this earth, nothing is without creation, even from the birth. You got to have sperm from a man, an egg from, from a woman, woman to create birth. Hold up. A liquid. Mm-hmm. We're going to help somebody today. A liquid. Go ahead. Bro. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, the H2, H2O. <laughs> Liquid, bro, goes into an egg. Or solid. And it forms bones. Yeah. Hard. Lungs. Eyeballs. Kidneys. Right. Your own DNA, your own fingerprint that ain't nobody else got. Yeah. And you, you, you gonna tell you, you gonna fool yourself. You gonna let the devil fool you and tell you that a mass created and create this. Yep. Come on, man. Right. It's simple. People. <laughs> to creation itself tells you that there is a God. <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? On, hey, the, I ain't. Hey, look, you look. Hey, on, I, I, I had mad respect for my guy before he got on here. I, like, I, I got a new respect because it didn't went he, up. he just hit me with something, and you know I'd be pretty deep. Yeah, but like, nah, you you just, yeah, hey, man, salute to you, man. Salute, 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 salute to you. It's just, you know, and and I'm, you know, we're no different from nobody else. We have our good days, we have our bad yeah, days, yeah. we have our wise, and we question God, and and this another thing. Stop, stop. I hate when people say don't question God. Where y'all get that from? Right. He said, I am your father. When you don't know the answer to something, what do you do? Right, that's a relationship. If your child don't know the answer, what is he going to come right. and ask his father, right. daddy, why this? Why this go like this? Yeah. Why this happen? Why? When you don't know the answer, God wants you to come to him and, and ask like, God, why? Why am I going? Show me. Right. Show me. Why did I go through this? Why did my this person have to pass? What? 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 And he'll show you. My daddy told me, he said, my daddy and mother died when he was 17 years old. And my daddy said he blamed God for a long time. Mm. He said, son, I was just so, he said, I was just mad at God for 30 years. And he said, I just kept blaming God. And then he said, it's just one day God just showed him, said, son, I ain't. I ain't had nothing to do with your mama, God. Mm-hmm. Yep. It was the food that she was eating. Mm. See, we we like to put and blame everything. Good, that's that's the that's the easy thing to do, though. Yeah. Right. That that's the most simplest it thing to do. Time, man. God, Take away accountability. God, right. God, God, man, God ain't doing none of this. Yeah. God is a God of life. Yeah. We choose not to eat. Life of choices. We choose how to exercise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's on us. Yeah. Right. You know, a, a, a lot of, man, come on, man. It's just, it's so much. In, and I just feel like I'm led to just have this conversation. No. Nah. So somebody Preacher. could see this because, because life, man, is so precious, but it's so many things that we could do to live this life abundantly and live it, live it live a longevity life by doing the simple things and following the simple principles of God. God tell you that this is another thing. I don't know if y'all ever thought of it. Let me hit you with it. Because I just be sitting back. Let go. Thinking, let's let's, let's go. On. I just be sitting back. Come thinking, on with it. And I'm thinking one day and I'm like, every time I've ever talked to a doctor mm. and when I had my stroke, to my head, you can get out of the blood, you know, you got to eat right, you know, you got to eat you know, a lot of fruits, you know, you got to eat a lot of vegetables, eat a lot of nuts and grains, right? And so one day I just, I was talking to my dad, I just got to thinking about this. And I'm like, everything these folks keep telling me is good for me, that's going to help me get out this blood pressure medicine, that's going to help me, you know, lose weight, it's everything that's from the ground. 
everything that come out the ground is what they keep telling me that I need to be mm-hmm. eating. Mm-hmm. It's healthy for me. Mm-hmm. What God said you come from? Mm-hmm. Don't it make huh? You come from the you come from the ground. Right. When we die, that's so where we go right back from. All, all, all that food that come from the ground, that's you. That's that's right. me. Yeah. This is this is why it's so important for us to eat this way. Because mm-hmm. everything that's made for us come out the ground because that's where we come from. We talked about this uh, episode two ago. We're talking about the Hebrew boys, the Hebrew boys, yeah, and how you know they were, you know, eating certain type of things, right. certain yeah, things, from a, and they wasn't like fast, that. and they just were right. only eating certain types of food. You made sure to say and, that uh, again. Not yeah, fast. no, I gotta say that because I, I, I get sick of that because people be like, "Oh, I'm fasting for me." <laughs> if you're eating, uh, you're not fasting. The word fast means that you are not eating. Yeah. That's why when you eat breakfast, it's called you're breaking. The fast because nobody eats while they're sleeping. Yeah. Right. So I can decide that I'm going to be a vegetarian, right. which means I'm not eating meat, but I'm not fasting right. because fasting means I'm not eating or drinking, period. Right. So if you are eating or drinking, you are not fasting. You can say I'm abstaining. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But but there's a difference in that. But like to your point, and I, I think a lot of us miss out because like I was telling you about my mom earlier, like she still eat meat, but right. she increased the stuff right. that she was needing was those fruits and vegetables. I it, I exactly. Need, need what it's from. And, right. And, I, and I'm saying all this to say because somebody looking at this, that's going to be looking at this, bro, is somebody that's dealing with, you know, going through something and and, and they on their verge of this. You know what I mean? God ain't real and God, ain't, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because of what, what they going through. And I just want them to just sit back and it's simple. Mm-hmm. It's simple. Like he just showed you like it's it's bro, when I thought of I never thought about that if before and when I did, it just blew my mind away when I'm like, all this stuff they telling me eat is from the earth. Mm-hmm. And this is what God said, I come from. Yeah. You come from the earth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, man, it's just, you know, and all that tied right back into what we doing with our music because we we, we, we speaking those negative things every day in the black community. Every time we go to the to the club, we, 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 we it's almost like a saying up to chanting this mm. stuff. We singing it. It's going to come back. And, yeah. and, 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 and it keep coming back up in our community. Keep coming up. Keep coming back up in our community. And the devil sitting back laughing like, my. And so you agree then that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Definitely. Perfect. Perfect. Definitely. Vena, we gonna uh we gotta get you back on for part two, bro. Cause we can I can we can talk to you. Yeah, no, nah, this was, I had no idea. Look, we, we can talk to you for we, a minute. We had this, idea. We had now we didn't have a script. Well, we can, even, and he and I talked off camera while JB was getting ready. We we talked about a lot. Of, like a lot of the stuff we talked about off camera, we didn't even get into. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, and this is it's like mind like, blowing. You know, a lot more we can get into. Lead. Yeah, you know, we just yeah. came in on some, you know, man. Yeah, hey, and and then it's just the stuff that I I think. The, the questions that y'all were asking and the topics that y'all brought up, it just all really tied into mm-hmm. everything. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, man. You know, man. Because I just, I'm just at a point in life, bro, where man, I really just want to see a day where where we get it together yeah. as a community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 it wasn't so bad when we were cheering. You know, like yeah. we, we could play in the street, we could mm-hmm. ride our bikes through the neighborhood. My daughter and my nieces don't have that freedom. Yeah, they don't have like it, it, you know, like you almost don't even want to. Like the little girl, my daughter went to a birthday party last night, and the little girl had a sleepover. But I'm like, I ain't leaving my daughter here. Right. Like, you know, she play, but we yeah. Right. 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 Because yeah. The way the world it's is going now, now. you, you know can't trust saying? it. You know, like I had to go in and look at the, oh, okay, the 
food don't go up to number three she up because you know i'm nervous about leaving my daughter with somebody else who i ain't gonna like it was that right, was up. Yeah. y'all had some of yeah. some of man you get dropped off yeah you get dropped off my parents knew <laughs> Mall of Memphis they gonna get be took, taken, taken care, care of with Mr. Ragland they gonna be taken care of right they knew you gonna be good with Mr. Chambers they gonna look at you just like you theirs yeah it's so different that and it's different bro because God has been taken out of everything dog yeah yeah He's been taken out of everything, and where there is no God, is no love. Yeah, man, that's a word. Perfect, perfect way so, to end that. Man, perfect before we end that, man, tell people where they can find you at, man. Man, I am Young Billy. Uh, you know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Young Billy, Y U N G B E L I. This all my uh, Apple Music, uh, Spotify. You know, all that, man, you know, but everywhere, just Google I Am Young Vetter or Google Young Vetter and, and you're going to find me. Uh, you definitely, if you you like real music, music with a message, uh, positive music, self music, you definitely enjoy that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure, for sure. So, yeah. uh, JB, I know we didn't do this at the beginning, but I know we running on time, but like yeah, let yeah, people yeah. know where they can get us at. On all our handles, man. On all our handles, man. On Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, all that is uh, at the Prez X. That's T H E P R E Z E X. Again, that is at the Prez X on everything. That's uh, T H E P R E Z E X, y'all. And we also on Venmo. So if y'all want to support us, yes, also on Venmo. Thank you for reminding me. We're on Venmo as well. So if you want to support us on Venmo, it'll be down there. That is at the Press X as well. So, and also, if you went through all this uh, pod, go ahead like that video right now. Man, and, share, uh, subscribe. Share and subscribe, y'all. And until next time, y'all, continue with that executive mindset. And most definitely keep it presidential. Ariva Dirty. Salute. Bow. In the house party, end up killing all the innocent. Baby girl, I had two kids on the way to college. You just ended it. When you were little, you had hoop drinks, but now you got a life sentence. And I'm just asking, what's the sense in it? We kill and settle out with differences. Face shots over dirty looks. Grown men acting feminine. Lies lost, you can't get them back. And these families torn, are you listening? Daughter Ray with no dad around. She feeling like the world let her down. Let's. Every day is a lesson. I won't let the world strip me. Wake up, know that this is a blessing. Lessons. Take a life, you can't get it back. They gon' give you life, you can't get that back. Tell me, nigga.